welcome to All About TRH, aka All About the Truth. On today's episode, we talk about some rumors going on regarding Real Housewives of New Jersey star Danielle Cabral and what's true, what's not. Plus, we give you an update on the Real Housewives of New Jersey altercation investigation. We also do a full recap of the Real Housewives of New York and touch on Below Deck's season finale. Oh. Hi, Chantal. Hey, Rexian. Do you hear my husband in the background? No, not yet. I don't think I do. Oh, he was he was making fun of us, and he's like, hey, Rexian. I don't know why he's <laughs> here every time we start an episode. But how was your Monday? It's Monday evening right now. How was your Monday? No, I did not have a good Monday. I didn't like today's, today's Monday. I feel like I had a pretty decent Monday. Oh, I'm happy for you. Thank you. You know how I get, someone sent me, one of my girlfriends sent me a picture of a shirt that said Sunday Scaries. And oh my God, we need to add that to merch. Cause I was like, I need that shirt because I get Sunday Scaries a hundred percent of the time. So, but you know, I woke up and it was actually a pretty good day. So I usually don't get, I mean, I, I get Sunday Scaries sometimes, but not all the time, but I don't know. Today was just like a bad day. You're tired, so you don't even think about Sunday scary. <laughs> oh, yeah, literally. I'm exhausted <laughs> after right, my Sunday. Just, you just go to sleep. Mm-hmm. Well, we have a good episode today, so we're going to clear up some rumors, give you some New Jersey updates. We got New York recap. Me and Chantal were just talking about New York before, and then we were like, okay, let's just save it until we <laughs> <No. laughs> actually uh, record. We're going to touch on Below Deck season finale, so this is a good one. Yeah, oh. Oh God, Below Deck was so good to me. It was okay. <gasps> I just I love know. that show. Well, let's start up with New Jersey, my fave. Let's clear up a rumor. So there's a rumor going around about Danielle Cabral hitting her sister-in-law. <gasps> and uh, yeah. And so I saw it on Twitter and I saw it from someone who I'm like, eh, I don't like who would tell them that, you know, and no disrespect or anything. But it just like kind of seemed like, okay, if you're going to hit your sister, in law, you're not going to come on the show and be like, I don't know why my brother hates me. You're not yeah. going to do that, right? <laughs> like, you're just not. But it's like going everywhere. Because I swear, Chantal, you don't, you're not on Twitter. But when something is on Twitter, that's it. Like, it spreads like crazy. So it's all over Twitter. And I'm like, this sounds so dumb. Like, I don't. And go back to our episodes because we talk about um, a really reliable tip that we got as to why Danielle and her brother aren't talking. But I was like, this sounds so dumb. Like, I would never have the balls to go on a show and say what I'm saying about like I don't know why he would never talk to me if I slap my sister-in-law. That would I'd be like, insane. You would look like a fool, and like yeah, no one would trust you. It sounds so ridiculous. So I contacted someone who's actually close with her brother, and it's absolutely untrue. So we want to debunk this rumor. I would stop spreading it. It's not true, even if it doesn't fit your narrative or whatever. It's it's just not true. So if you are sharing it please stop because it's literally not true at all. Um, So I just wanted to make sure that we cover that. As uh, far as what's going on with the Real Housewives of New Jersey, after we reported an investigation, um, we had said that the ladies filming was canceled. So I'm hearing no one is getting fired. And I think honestly, they're just like crossing all bases. Wait, what what did you say? Sorry, my thing went out (laughs) about the being fired. Oh, I said that the, so I said that, you know, I feel like, um, I, I said no one's getting fired is what I said. I think that oh, okay, yeah. cases. like they're just making sure they're like, okay, let's just make sure we go through protocol and we do the right thing so we can document that we did like look into this and nothing's wrong. So I think we're good. No one's going to get fired. So, um, we actually got a tip from an employee at bookends that Bravo will be filming on Tuesday, September 26th uh, at 6 p.m. And they are told that housewives that are on good terms with Jackie will attend Jackie's book signing. So, Ooh. yeah. I, mean, I saw, I saw like, people um, promoting it. Like, so Margaret was promoting it on her Instagram. Teresa did. I'm sure they all were, but. Well, no, nice. what happened was Jackie sent a box of a book to every single cast member. Whether she gets along with them or not, she sent it to them. And yeah, so like a PR every, thing? Yeah, so a PR box of my book. And typically, just like we talk about this with New York, we say, you know, like, uh, Jenna Lyons does this. Like, she'll send them stuff or give them stuff in hopes that they post about it. 
And that's exactly what Jackie did. You know, she sent every one of them, even if she's not good with them, a book. And they all got it on the same day. And so far, every single one of them has shared it. Ex- even even Bravo Lover 1234 shared it. And she's not on best terms with Jackie. Even Margaret did. They're not on the greatest terms right now. But do you know who didn't share it, Chantel? Melissa? Exactly. Melissa is wow. the only one who didn't share it on her story. I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt. She had a wedding this weekend that was filmed, just a ceremony. We talked about that in the last episode. So on Saturday, so I think they all got it Monday morning or Sunday evening. I forgot which day, but uh, I think Margaret immediately posted about it. Jennifer did, and then Bravo Lover did today, and Teresa did today. And then whoever yeah. else I'm missing did. So what do you um what do you feel about this narrative or theory going around that Margaret uh, Margaret and um Jackie are fighting just to get Jackie back on full time? Like they like orchestrated this together. Yeah, I think that's that's a great question and we did talk about it on Patreon. Sorry to tease that, but we did. But I do think that that's absolutely not true. I think Jackie truly felt that these people were her friends. Okay. Yeah. She really thought Melissa and uh, Margaret, I was about to call her Dolores, were her actual friends. Like, you know, she really tried with them. But like, let's be real. In the real world, Melissa, like a Melissa would never hang out with a Margaret or a Jackie. So as soon as Jackie got demoted, she stopped hanging around Jackie. And I think that does get brought up on the season that that's exactly how Jackie felt. But like, Anyone could see that that's how she felt because they did kind of distance themselves. And the way Margaret and Melissa are taking it is like, you're a needy friend. Like you need so much attention. It's hard to be friends with you, but they're not on the other side. So they don't know how it feels. They don't, they're not the ones who got demoted while their friends still stayed full time. And Jackie is a very loyal person, whether we like her or not, she's a very loyal person. So to her, I mean, look what she did at the reunion. She literally, her and Jacqueline Larita had a really good relationship. They would like be nice to each other, text each other. And what did Jackie do? She ruined all that just so that Melissa could say a text from Jacqueline Larita talking crap about Teresa. And for what? Like these girls really didn't care about you as soon as you got demoted. And you saw that, but you still wanted to see if I do more for them, will they be good to me? And and they, they didn't. We didn't see them hanging around in the summer a lot. There were things that she didn't get invited to. So it's not fake. Jackie's a very sensitive person, so it's not fake at all. Like, she's 100% hurt, and they 100% are like, she's a lot. The only thing that I will say that I can kind of see it sometimes is that the fact that she didn't get, like, she didn't distance herself or get mad at Margaret when she found out she's the one that spread the rumors about her and her husband cheating, like, her husband cheating on her. Chantal, they're all scared of her, though. I so know, that's true. They're all okay, scared of true. her. They're not going to. That You know, she's going to have a whole lie, and they're just going to say whatever. They're, like, in an alliance, and, again, Jackie thought it was real. It's more than just a show. For a lot of this, for a lot of the housewives, the show is everything to them because they need the money. For a Margaret, she needs the money. Melissa, they live paycheck to paycheck. They keep up with the Jones. They need the money. Teresa said she needs the money. She said, I have four girls going to college that I'm paying the college. So I need the money. They all, right? They all need the money. Let's say Jennifer Aiden. She does not need the money. Her husband does extremely well. They don't need her, the money. Jackie. Jackie does extremely well. She doesn't need the money. She has like a trust fund. I don't even know what the hell she has, but yeah, she she's, rich. <laughs> she's super paid. She doesn't need it. So to her, this was like real friends, you know, it's not like Jackie's the type who's like a fame whore. Like you would never yeah. get that from a Jackie, like a Danielle, Danielle, like desperately needs the money. Like she lives like how the rest of us live, like middle class, nothing wrong with that, but wrong show. You're on the wrong show. Cause I don't want to watch that. So at least like, you know, <laughs> Melissa and them, we think they have money just cause I mean, what their, their house and their cars or whatever, but I'm, I don't, I don't mind watching people that have like no money, but just own it, you know, like just own it. And like, like what's her name from Salt Lake city? You know, she was crying about having to buy a Louis Vuitton bag. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. See, I love that. Yeah. I love someone who owns 
their shit and can say that and not just be like, well, I want to be famous. I want to be famous so badly because that's just too much. We just found out too. One of you guys sent us a message about Tiffany, the new friend of, and they said that she was on Amazing Race. I'm like, no, not another one. Oh. Where they're on TV <laughs> and that like they've been trying to get on TV. I hope that's not the case with Tiffany. So I don't want to judge her yet. We'll see. Uh, well, anyways, also on Wednesday, Danielle is making a kid's bougie luncheon and, um, that is going to be filmed. I mean, now that everything is clear and I'm almost 90% sure it is, they're gonna, that was supposed to be filmed. It got all approval to get filmed. And yeah, I think it's like something where they're bringing their kids. I'm not sure, but I also don't want this to be a season of like bougie tacky central. Like I, know, I, I don't seriously. want that. Is bougie like I'm so bad about this, but is bougie a boutique or her actual like designs that she's like claiming? No, she doesn't actually like make the designs. It's like so what she, Melissa does. Melissa gets from like other... yeah. So it's like a boutique that she has. That's so like it's oh like my a God. kids online clothing. Yeah, like so two thousand and about... like one. Well, think about like you know Orange County or like we just watch like Heather Dubrow throw like this beautiful like thing for her uh work or for her new business that she was doing like that's what i want to see with the real Housewives of new jersey and i feel like dolores did do it one episode last season but i just feel like they don't have that it's just like oh a luncheon for like bougie kids like tacky central we're already <laughs> gonna see like a fashion show with that we're already gonna have another lunch about it and I'm just not here for it, you guys. I'm not. So that's all our New Jersey updates. We want to say shout out to all the people. You know, our story got um, a lot of press. So that was great. Yes. So, and, I, and I did see some people that, you know, um, gave you credit, girl. Yeah. So we got. Uh, so that was really, really nice. So. Yeah. And thank you. And I feel like our listeners, man, they just really have our back. They're like, Hey, they like, like I corrected this person. Cause I don't like how they didn't mention you or something. And I'm like, Oh my oh, God. Yeah. I would see a comment saying this came from all about tear range. I know. I <laughs> Can love you put it. that on there? So, it was yeah. Funny. So yeah, that is all of our New Jersey stuff. We will keep you updated. Um, but I think we should go into New York Chantel, huh? Yeah. So Chantel and I were talking about on the thing where it was like, we both felt like this episode was too much. Yeah, to me, it's like I felt like the same combo was happening in like 95 different scenes. And I was like, what, what is happening here? Right. Yeah. And that's, that's what, how I even started my notes. I said the fight continues from last week and I'm scared. You know, I was, I really was scared. Like while Uba and Aaron are arguing, Sai steps in and she's like, let's stop this. And Aaron is like super dramatic. And she's like, this is the worst conflict I've had in my life. And when I like, I'm the type of person when I get into a confrontation and like, if something like that happened to me. I can't have fun. I just can't. They go on. What What was that? Like a bus, a motor? What the hell do you call it? ATV? No, I don't know. What it is. Um, well, like, it's kind of like a tuk-tuk in a car. Like, they were driving it. It's kind of All cool. right. Well, they're driving mm -hmm. a mini car. I don't even know. <laughs> and Aaron is like, I don't have my sunglasses. And Jenna's like, I'm going to go get your sunglasses. And Uba is not giving in. She's like, absolutely not. And here is where I see things get too petty. I don't like how Aaron walked down and acted all hard when walking down the stairs and when she heard her name. But Uba acting this way about her sunglasses, it's just weird. You already made your point, you know? Yeah, it was like to hold in. She's like for 45 minutes. It was weird. It was it's just sunglasses. Like, what are you doing? And she's like kind of started taunting her like a little bit about yeah. it as well. But I was dying when like um Jenna comes up to her and she goes, hi, can she have hi, her son? Yeah. I'm like, it's like, you know, my, you know, Bianca, how sometimes she talks low and like, yeah. like okay, just say, give me the sunglasses. You're being petty and yeah, let's go. Exactly. <laughs> I know a hundred percent. That's by the way, Bianca Chantel's sister, but yeah, yeah, like literally just look at her and be like, give them to me. This is a joke right now. But she was just like, okay, you're being serious. Okay. Let me, let me go tell her. Okay. Yeah. 45 minutes. <laughs> yeah. So weird. Yeah. Let me go tell her you just started your alarm or whatever. And so Jenna, she, she even described it in her confessional. She's like, it's just so petty. And Bryn makes a good point. She's like, she looked at Uba and she's like, you know, you, you were right about this, but when you act this way, you're wrong. And I couldn't agree more. Like Uba was completely right you know, with her points and whatever. But then the way she went about it, it was like, I don't know. You know what? Throughout this episode, I'm like, this person's wrong. Then I said, this person's right. This person's yeah. wrong. This person's right. Mm -hmm. I was like, I don't even know. Uba says she has uh, a deal with her family to check in with them. And I get that. You have every right to be mad, but just taking the sunglasses isn't helping. And I don't know. And how she didn't steal your phone. You left it in a car and she, yeah. she got it and thought this is a good opportunity. Right. 
Uba's like me, by the way, where she always loses her phone. I always lose my phone. Everyone hates me because I'm always constantly like, where's my phone? Where's my phone? Like my in-laws, they want to kill themselves like when I, they're around me because I'm always losing my phone. So I can understand that. Now, Bryn is initially defending Aaron, and Uba is like, Bryn, she abuses you. And she's trying to get Bryn mad, too. And this is what I don't like. Like, this is what I don't like about people. I don't like about I don't like when you're, like, now trying to be like, you should be mad at her. I, it's weird. Like, this is about you and Aaron, not Bryn. And then they go to the beach. They go to the beach bar. And I need, oh, I'm sorry, you guys. My mom's calling me. I'll call her back. Um, they go to a beach bar. And Chantal, I need Tropical. I know. I, I wanted to go to this, like, rum tasting. I was, like, I know. I was like, craving it. I can't, like, honestly, they handle themselves well drunk. Yes. Mm -hmm. They really do, because I'd be throwing up. This trip um seems so funny, but, like, and, and, or I'm sorry, this trip seems so fun, but for me, like, I would love to go on a trip like that, but with people, like, I, or it's guaranteed no drama. Someone would be embarrassed to have drama like that. Yeah, exactly. But I feel like every girl's trip, there's always so much drama. No. Really? I always feel like if someone wants to do something and then you don't want to do something. So I always just feel like that there's something that goes on. No, I feel like we're, it's, I mean, I've been on girls trips and I feel like you're pretty. I've been on girls like, trips, sweetie. Thank you. Oh, you have? You know what I'm thinking about, Chanel? I'm thinking about when we went to Vegas at 21 years old. Okay. Like who, what, that was weird. <laughs> because that's like a girls trip I went on. I know, but that was like weird of us. Like it was like a weird group of people that we went to Vegas yeah. with. Yeah. Uh, during the beach bar, Uba's alarm goes off and it just like brings back the memory of why everyone was pissed. And Erin gets her sunglasses and she says, instead of getting so mad, talk to me as a friend. And Uba is still not having it. She's like, don't tell me what to do. She and was I so hot. She was so oh, hot and bothered. It was like the scariest thing I've ever seen in my life. No, I was literally sinking in my chair. I was so scared. Uh, and I think when like a person like Uba is upset, she needs to be by herself for a day. You can't yeah. be around them. <laughs> like you, you need to go somewhere. You need to walk it off and you need me time with no one else in your ear just to cool off and like relax. To me, as if someone was acting the way that Uba was acting, I would have just been just as loud as her and never just sat there and made myself look so small because she just wanted the attention and make her feel so uncomfortable, which made me feel so uncomfortable. Yeah. Bryn is like, can we stop fighting in Uba? Uh, says that, you know, Bryn, she called you a social climber. And I would die in my seat if I was Aaron because Uba just keeps going lower and lower. And what, what's going to end up happening is they're all going to go against her. And that's exactly what happened, you know, until she broke. She and, fights dirty, I'll tell you that. Yeah, she really does. And and keep in mind, like, they were friends. They were, like, good friends before the show. Yeah. So what the hell is this? Like, remember she gave her the jewelry for her, her like, Bow renewal? Yeah. Uh -huh. Aaron is so shocked that Uba would go there. She needs to leave and Uba's trying to control herself and she's like coming so quick. And I think what it is, Chantal, is that Aaron's tone pisses off Uba. Yeah. Cause it's she, like her tone. Yeah. Like she kind of does make it seem like she is a, they both made each other seem like they're each other's child, but she's like, come here. Yeah. No, don't talk to me. Like it's just, yeah, it's I wrote about times. that. Yeah. Yeah. So Aaron leaves and Aaron's mad that they're not checking on her and they're just having fun with Uba. And I mean, what do you expect, Aaron? Like, it's not their battle. Aaron should be happy that at least Jenna did come and check on her. And I they've do already think, told Uba she's wrong. Think, yeah, I know. But I do think that she thinks that she's friends with all of them, maybe besides Jessel. So she's like, wow, none of them came up and checked up, checked up on me. But Cy truly had her back. And honestly, Bryn, until the social climber stuff, ha had her back too. Yeah. Uh. But you know what's it was interesting to me is like that they were driving that thing and they were all like drinking heavily. I know, but they're in like a different country. I think okay, rules are different. well, I think you still get DUIs, right? Like, <laughs> well, no, actually, happened. no, actually, if you thought about it, it was Jenna and Uba who are driving and they don't drink. Oh, Jenna and Uba don't drink. Yeah, I they, never they, caught that. No, they never drink ever. Good for them. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So actually, no, no. I'm, the, I'm sure that you might yeah. you guys, but yeah. I had no <laughs> idea. Okay. Wow. I do appreciate that Sai is checking Uba because now Uba is literally making it like Aaron is an abusive person and a liar. And Sai's like, dude, this is enough. And you can tell Sai's getting very annoyed. Yeah. And then you can, it, this is when you can kind of start to tell where Jessel's trying to connect all the dots. Like she's like loving this. She's like, moo-hoo-ha-ha-ha, -ha -ha, you yeah. know? Yeah. But yeah. to me, I, I would never think 
everything we've seen to me, Erin is not a liar, but she does just put everything out there. She and, like, stirs. The, she stuff. stirs. Yeah. yeah, that's what it is. She confronts everything. Whatever is bothering her, she says. She stirs the shit. Like Uba won't let up, and Uba. I don't know. They're just obviously they're very different. These two, like very different personalities. I think sometimes too, again, with the first seasons, what happens is that you kind of don't know how you're going to be portrayed. And if you start to see a friend start acting different, you're like, what is she doing? Is she doing this for the show? Is she not? Is she trying? Does she know something? I don't know. Maybe they just start getting insecure more towards the end too. Yeah. Well, Sai doesn't want to have the same conversation. She just wants to move on. And as soon as Sai leaves while they're all like having a drink, sitting down, Uba keeps going. And then Uba does get hot, but you kind of have to appreciate that she's direct she'll tell you what she doesn't like this is who she is and then jenna chandel this was so scary our next partner is ag1 the daily foundational nutrition supplement that supports whole body health i've consistently drank it every day for the last month and a half and i feel so much better i was tired of ordering a new supplement every day and i wanted a single solution that supports my entire body and covers my nutritional bases every day I wanted better gut health, a boost, or at least a similar one in energy, immune system support, and I don't like taking pills and vitamins just because I forget. So I wanted a supplement that would actually taste great and that would be easy to do. And I'm also always looking for something to do quick and what's quicker than scooping up powder that has all the essentials and tastes great. I'm always looking for life upgrades, which is why I've come to love and trust AG1. This all-in-one foundational nutrition formula makes it easy for me to cover my nutritional bases every single day. Again, it is packed with 75 vitamins, minerals, probiotics, and whole food source ingredients of high quality that gives me major benefits like gut and mood support, boosted energy, and even healthier looking skin. If you want to take ownership of your health, try AG1 and get a free one-year supply of vitamin D and five free AG1 travel packs with your first purchase. Go to drinkag1.com slash TRH. That's drinkag1.com slash TRH. Check it out. Support for today's episode comes from Jenny Kane. Perfect timing, honestly, because fall is on the way and my wardrobe could definitely use a refresh. If you're like me, you're on TikTok and you're seeing all the latest fall trends and that's where I found Jenny Kane. Jenny Kane is a California brand through and through and their staples make getting dressed easier than ever before. Think minimalist, effortless, but totally refined and trendy. From luxurious cashmere sweaters and iconic accessories to elevated versions of all your everyday basics, not to mention the most incredible home essentials too, Jenny Kane is here to help you live your best season yet. And for a limited time, our listeners get 15% off their first order. Go to JennyKane.com and use the code TRH to get 15% off. I get compliments every time I wear Jenny Kane sweater. And they're so comfortable. I can truly live in them all season long. And they have neutral colors, so I literally wear the same one about three times a week. I just style it differently, and the quality is unmatched. They also have an incredible rewards program where you can earn up to 10% back with every purchase. And joining is completely free. Find your forever peace at JennyKane.com and our listeners will get 15% off your first order when you use code TRH at checkout. That's 15% off your first order at J-E-N-N-I-K-A-Y-N-E.com promo code TRH. Let getting dressed be one less thing to worry about. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I have now have a handle on my panic attacks, but I am starting to get claustrophobic in a lot of different areas of my life. Example, a plane, a busy crowd. Like I was just at the Lions game and you know when you're you're leaving and everyone's waiting to get out? Just very random things I never had to think twice about. Dealing with anything in life, therapy helps you stay connected to what you really want while you navigate. So you can move forward with confidence and excitement. Trusting yourself to make decisions that align with your values is like anything. The more you practice it, the easier it gets. I am still in therapy now to help with anxiety around all the claustrophobia that I have been experiencing, and it it is just so nice to talk to someone about it. 
If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online that offers video, phone, and even live chat only therapy sessions. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and switch therapists anytime for no additional charge. Let therapy be your map with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash TRH today to get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash TRH. She says, the first time I saw Uba's different side is when we invited her somewhere. And I guess Jenna's assistant didn't tell her it was going to be filmed. And Uba looked dropped at gorgeous. But she, like, was not happy about it. So she walked in and she's like, don't ever tell me to come somewhere and not warn me that there's going to be cameras. I know. I was shook when she said that because you look better that day than you were on the vacation right now. Right. Like, she looks so good. I was like, maybe it was, like, an outfit that she was worried about or something. I feel I feel like she was, like, more in her sweats. But, like, Jenna's so innocent that she was like, oh, my gosh, I'm sorry. You know? Like, she, it, to her, she was so shook at Did they bring that. glam on this trip? I didn't, I don't know. I didn't see any, but a lot of the time we don't see it. Yeah. So I don't know. I don't know. I can't really see anyone bring glam. It's not like any of them had any dramatic looks. <laughs> they didn't. Funny. That'd be funny if they did. They did. Oh have my gosh. <laughs> Uba says that when black women get upset, there's a stigma about it. And she's absolutely right. But Sai says it doesn't play out to this conversation. And Sai is like, I'm fucking done with this. She's so over it because you know, when someone talks about something too much, it, you end up going crazy. And that's where Sai is at when it comes to all of this. It was the whole day. It was like, you, ruined, really my, you ruined my rum tour. You ruined my, my dinner, my lunch. It's like enough. Yeah. And then, okay, so Bryn has this moment where she opens up about herself and she talks about how she works 10 hours a week making great money. And are you a hooker? Like, yeah, what do you do? What's his job? Can I have it? She's like a consultant for what? Because what? Like, how do you only work 10 hours and make the money that you're making? That's wild. And it was really sad, though. You know, she got emotional talking about how she was raised by her grandma. And it just like, I don't know, you could tell like she's so drunk. She's getting so emotional. There's like a lot more to her. Yeah. Her story. So back at their Anguilla house, Aaron calls her dad and she has a breakdown. And I get this. I think Aaron to me is like embarrassed by the whole situation. When I tell stories, I, I cry if I'm already so emotional. I, I feel like it never happens to me that much, but I do know that feeling where you're yeah. like just so overwhelmed and you're just like, <gasps> yeah. And especially when you talk, when you talk to your parents for some reason, you just feel so, um, emotional. <laughs> Have you ever cried with your parents? No, but I can know that feeling. <laughs> no, I really don't think Chantal's ever cried with her parents. No, I never cried to them that they probably made me cry. Yeah. Well, <laughs> we can tell, <laughs> we can talk about a lot of stories about that, but we're not going to go there. But no, yeah, you've never cried to your parents. I've cried to my parents, but like, I feel like my because parents are different than yours. If I cried to my parents, my parents would literally have a heart attack for nine days. They're like, they're oh like God. Justin's mom. They would make, they would be so worried. And it's like, I don't have time for that. I just feel like, no, I feel like your mom would look at you and be like, okay, why are you crying? <laughs> you know, no, like, actually, I know a time. That. I know a time I was crying I, when I broke my arm. Remember I broke my arm? Like, <laughs> okay. when I was like, well, yeah. Day. It was like my last um, semester in college. And like, I was my right arm and I couldn't do anything. So I started crying. Wait, are you talking about so... when you were with us? Yeah, when I broke my arm snowboarding with you. Oh, yeah. She was with my husband and I. <laughs> <laughs> my husband I was dating him at the time my husband's like snowboards and he's so good at it and she she's like my friend snowboard I'm gonna try it and she went on the biggest hill ever and literally, it was like dark you guys like we were like the last people there she flipped 700 times like rolled and rolled and rolled we literally had a got paramedics and they had to like come up there with like a sled and they literally <laughs> she was getting dragged down in the sled <laughs> i still have pictures from this you guys yeah and my husband literally was like <laughs> oh my god and it was just me her and my husband at the urgent care i mean my boyfriend he was my boyfriend at the time but it was just us three <laughs> for like six hours and they're trying to like break my bones in place and roxanne had to get out of the room because yeah. she was like scared to look at it i hate that stuff I don't even, yeah. I don't. So like I remember it, crying. Like, yeah. okay, I remember crying for my dad one time and he felt so bad for me. Yeah. Okay. But Chantal, that's like, cause you broke something. Like how no, sad No, no. I was that? crying because I was frustrated because I couldn't like wash my hair or clean or something. There was like something like silly. And so, yeah, that I don't was think like that's silly. Time. And see like the fact that we think stuff like that's silly is so scary. 
<laughs> we're so like we're not I little bees. We're just what, like what, what is that? No, we're so like not like traumatized. I don't know what the word is, but like my mom and even my dad, they like feel closer to me when I like cry to them. They're like, that's oh, because nice. she tells us stuff. Yeah, and like that's what that was the difference about our moms. And, and like now, <laughs> that's why my mom is so like close to Chantal because I get so. Like I have no like patience for her, so like now she just goes to Chantel for everything. Um, love you, mom, because she listens to us. She gets excited. She's like, one time she was like, you know, Chantel needs to talk more. She doesn't oh. talk as much. <laughs> she said, you talk a lot. Who would have thought you'd be good at this? But Chantel, <laughs> she needs to talk more. How come she's not talking? Like. Oh my God. I think so. my mom like will hear me sometimes talk, but then I think it's because of your mom telling them like we do this. My mom doesn't oh, understand my mom, you guys. My mom like thinks it's like a big deal. Yeah, my mom's like, what is my mom's like, what is this that you're doing with Roxanne? Yeah. I'm like, yeah. oh my God. They don't get it at all. Yeah, no, that's well, my dad does not under my dad doesn't even know that we do this. Like he <laughs> would never get it. And he'd be so scared because of the things that we talk about. Sometimes he'd be like, the sis, which means like you embarrassment. What are you doing? You know? <laughs> Uh, okay i'm sorry guys we always do that uh okay so um oh okay so i love aaron's dad you can tell the way she was raised like she was just raised by parents who obviously love her showed her so much love he's giving great advice and then i wrote this chantal i wrote chantal i feel like we lack emotions at times in the sense that aaron starts thinking about when she was bullied as a kid and it's like we were all bullied growing <laughs> up and i feel oh, like girl right okay girl, girl. Like, yeah <laughs> I feel like we were bullied and we were just like, oh, well, and we never go back to it. It's not like anything that happens, like even if it's been the worst thing ever that we ever say, like, it's because I was bullied. I swear, maybe it's a cultural thing, how we were raised. Like we were raised, you know, in hopes like to not have emotion. Again, my mom's the only different aunt out of all my aunts where she like has overly emotion. If that even, no, that's not even, no, that is even not the right saying, but I just feel like it's a cultural thing that we are the way we are. Yeah. I mean, yeah. we, like she said that she got caught like jaw something like her, her jaw. Yeah, she said her jaw. Um, she said that something happened with her jaw. But um, what what I will say is that I would die if my kids get bullied. Like I'm gonna be such a baby over it if they get bullied. But I for us, like it, it was completely fine. It's completely fine. But back to Bryn, I feel like she would be so fun. But do you think that Bryn thrives for attention? And, like, do you think you'd be annoyed of her when you're around her? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, like, wouldn't it be too much? Like, it's funny and cute until it's not. It, it's, like, funny when – yeah, exactly. It's, like, it's like when it's everyone and everything, it's too much. It's, it's she like – She was getting up on the on the tree. She she flirts with the freaking garbage can. She flirts with everybody, yeah. like, a lot. Like, we get it. You're hot. Like, okay, this is so un- – You're hot, and this is so unattractive to me. I don't know. She's, like, very charming, but it's, like, you don't have to be charming to every everyone and everything. I mean, even in our confessionals, like, the winks and the, like, sorry that your husband doesn't like you like me, it's too much. It's yeah. too much. <laughs> It's crazy how popular Jenna Lyons is, Chantel, and me and you downplay the shit. I out still of her. don't know. I still don't know. Like she literally said that they're like, "Do your kids, your your kids, your, your son. son, like parents know who you are or stuff?" Like what? Yeah, I know. I swear, it's a New it's York because thing, she dude. was the CEO of um like that clothing company or like what? I else? think. I think no. I think she really does have like a big uh, social. We, we've literally had a million people message us and be like, "This is all that she's done." So she's done stuff, but we're also like not into that world or we are not from New York. I don't know. But yeah. um, so Uba ends up apologizing to the ladies, not to Aaron, but to the ladies. And I'm so back and forth with Uba because Uba's like, you know, this is how I am. If you don't like it, it's how I deliver my message. That's exactly who I am. And she's like, I'll be the same way at 80 years old. And it, again, it reminds me of my parents. Like it reminds us of our parents. That's literally like, they're like, this is who I am. Get over it. Yeah, you can be who you are, but then when you when you when you go too far sometimes, or if you if you're seeing someone cry, it's okay to apologize. Right. As they're headed home, we now hear Uba can't stand Aaron. Uba said Aaron, we already said called Bryn a social climber. Now Bryn is telling Jessel that Aaron called her dumb, 
And she's someone who tries to compare stories and yada, yada, yada. And it's like, oh my gosh, a shit show is about to happen. And Jess was like, I have a checklist of all the things <laughs> that Aaron has done on my phone. And Bryn's like, oh shit. And this is what I'm on the fence about Bryn. Cause I feel like Uba was calming down a little. And then Bryn knows Aaron is about to have a breakdown and it's going to be a lot more drama for Aaron, which it, like, let's take Aaron out of the equation. It's a lot for someone. So Bryn now hyping Jessel up to pull out, like, her phone with notes. It's, like, too much. She was excited. She was excited for the messiness, and she was excited for it to come from someone else because she doesn't have the balls to tell her. It's, like, she always yeah. is, like, she, it's, like, she's always telling her, you did this, but then, okay, we can we be friends again? Or right, it's just weird. She's right. like, your relationship with on um, Yeah. Well, you know, stuff like that, you typically can really, you'll never be completely good. There will always be something that pops up. The- and just a li- list to me wasn't that. I was just talking about everything that she feels that Erin has done to her. It wasn't, she wasn't like taking notes on everything else. Right. It was Absolutely. weird, but it wasn't that bad. Yeah. The ladies stopped to tell Jenna and Saya how Jessel has a list. And I love how Jenna acts like she knows what they're talking about. And she's like, I'm not sure who that is. They were talking about like some Capone guy. I don't even know what they were saying. I don't either. Do you know Al Capone? I don't know. I really like Sai this episode because she says Uba, you know, was finally calming down. Now they're all hyping her up. Like Sai saying everything I'm thinking. Yeah, I think. But sometimes Sai is so nonchalant that it's just in certain situations, it wouldn't it wouldn't go. But this situation, it did. Yeah. The ladies come home and Aaron tells Uba to come. And I feel like Aaron needs to understand, or what happened was, was she opened the door and she was like, Uba, come. And I feel like Aaron needs to understand she can't talk that way with people. And Her tone. Uh, right. It's like a lot of people aren't going to take it right because you guys aren't even in a good place. Uba's already on defense. So say it nice, like, Uba, can we please talk? But instead she's like, Uba, come. And it's like, what you who you, come. You, yeah literally like <laughs> yeah she has like deeper voice who says that after fighting but then uba is also too much because Aaron wants to resolve things and uba's like can you take your sunglasses off and it's like calm down dude and she's older she's like saying in a nice way right but i respected that because yeah say in a nice way so i can come because let's know. let's like drop our walls down a little bit and be nice well if Aaron said one thing she's like I never mind. I don't want to resolve things with you. But I also feel like Erin is too much where she's kind of like, she repeats how she feels and a million times. And it's like, we get it just enough. But um, to me, Uba didn't really seem like she wanted to resolve things. They both can't, they, I mean, they both couldn't get through to each other. And there was a weird point where Bryn loses, or I'm sorry, who lost her phone? Uba lost Uba her phone. Uba loses it again. Yeah. And to, and she wanted to get it to make a point to Aaron. It was weird. And then we find out that Uba left it in the car, just like she did the night before. And the fact that you couldn't find it again, you couldn't go to the car and look. Were you even looking? Right, right. Yeah. So they're all in the jacuzzi and they're all about to go in on Aaron. And this is when I don't like the side of Brynn or just anyone. When everyone starts attacking one person, it's a lot for someone. I don't like seeing everyone do it. And Brynn is also really stirring the pot. Now Brynn is mad at Aaron and she was the one who had an inappropriate comment with someone's husband, period. And she's like, I just can't even believe you would, you know, ever say that. And Aaron's like, we're done. Why are we even talking about? And Jess was like, well, you're all about owning your own shit. And Sai's like, dude, I feel like this is an ambush. And I agree. Yeah, I agree. And, and for Bryn, Bryn, all you talk about and all you promote is your flirting and what you do and and you act that way all the time. So what she said wasn't so so off. Yeah, you call a spade a spade, dude. And that's it. She was exactly. right about that. Um, if I was Aaron, I would want to go home. She's having a breakdown. She feels like Uba is trying to get everyone against her. And I mean, she kind of was. She literally said to everyone, she literally said, everyone thinks you're a liar. Like, you know, she kind of was. But once she looks at everyone and she's like, can you guys just stop? She, she starts crying, but she didn't have tears. And then, oh. <laughs> and I noticed that. And then Aaron is like, but, but her, voice, she was. her voice was like changing a lot. Yeah, I could tell she really was emotional. And then Aaron is like, Uba, can we talk? And once they start feeling bad, it's like, Aaron, drop it. Because at this point, Aaron, you know, you're breaking down. Uba's comforting you. Just drop it and, like, move on. But, of course, like, Aaron wants to have a damn conversation. And I'm like, enough. Like, enough with these conversations. And Uba does apologize. But Aaron keeps going about, you know, how, like, she felt and whatever. But, I mean, they did end up moving on. So, I don't know. I don't think I liked Bryn this episode. 
And the stuff with Jenna and how she keeps flirting and teasing to me is annoying. Because if Jenna started liking her, I guarantee Bryn would be like, wait, I was joking. And I don't like people like that. I know. Because, like, you're you're putting it you're putting it out there. So it's like yeah. you can't get mad when someone has, like, a feeling of what you're doing. Right. I don't know. Yeah. And it's, it's like, literally, like, let's say right now Jenna ended up liking her. Bryn would be like, fuck, what did I do? And it's like, what do you mean what did you do? You did everything that someone does when you're interested. I'm, I'm confused. I know someone like that, too, where they're like, that's just my personality. I just flirt. I just flirt. But it's like, no, people people think that you want them. Right. Exactly. Um, Jenna's just, you know, really a nice person um, because Erin now can see and looks at Jenna and she's like, now I know what you went through. And Jenna's like, I hate that you even had to go through that. And I'm like, oh, my gosh, Jenna, like, I know. are you sure you're <laughs> on the right show? This is not the show for you. I, I really, know. I'm really curious to see what happens to her on the reunion. Cause like, you know, like a year passes by the time they do the reunion. So they're like, oh, they're like, let's go. I will say I didn't like this episode. I was like, there was, there was drama, but I was like not invested. Cause I was like, it's too much. Like it's it the same literally thing. too much. Yeah. It's like it, exactly different scenarios, different backdrops with the same conversation. And I didn't like it. So I also don't really like Jessel. I don't know how I feel. I don't know. Poor Jessel, Jessel can go. She always gets forgotten. I know, but that that is, that is sad. That's so messed up. I I feel really like sad about that. That would make me so insecure. But yeah. Uh, so that's New York. I don't know. This is not a good episode. It was kind of like I didn't like it. No, but there's it, like it had two more episodes left. Wow. I mean, it's a first season. Yeah. That was that that wasn't a lot of episodes at all, but it's a first season. I mean, overall, I like the season, but this was their their fights are so fucking petty, guys. I can't. So petty. Uh, all right. Well, you know, we wanted to touch on below deck season finale, uh, and it was a season finale, so it was a lot of goodbyes, and um, I can't wait for below deck to come back. I think the only thing was that did you um. Well, how did you feel about that girl and her dress situation? How, like, they she put the stain on her dress, and then she kept acting like there was no, no big deal. But then every scene you saw to her, like, family or, like, her husband, she's like, they ruined my dress. They ruined my dress. I feel like I would do that. I feel like I'd be oh, like, okay. it's no big deal. And I feel like behind the scenes, I'd be like, I'm kind of pissed. Like, this dress did get ruined. I forgot about that part. Um, I feel like, you know, I would be really mad. Because what happened, guys, was – there was a dress that um, one of the guests at Below Deck, you know, the guests, it's like a super yacht, and they come and they stay there. And one of the, what do we call them? A stew? Yeah. They ironed the dress, and then the dress, like, burned. And so when and the stew it's went, really an expensive dress. Oh, yeah. When the stew went and told her, she was like, oh, it's, oh, my gosh, no, it's fine. It's fine. But then when she went back and told her friend, she's like, she ruined my dress. I'm never letting them iron my stuff. And I feel like any of us would say that. Like, I, I think it's, you know, the only one weird thing about that girl was like, she was like, they're going to think we're so nice. And I was like, okay, that's too much. Yeah. <laughs> that was like scary. That part I was like too scary but what i what i do want to talk about about the episode was remember you guys we talked about jamie and culver and the sheffy's like love triangle and how jamie knew that culver and sheffy were like kind of talking and so then she wanted the attention and culver ended up liking her and he became like really obsessive over her wanted to date her after five days well of course a hot guy comes in and she goes and she kisses him while she's still dating Culver. Do we believe that the next morning she did not know she kissed him? No, she a hundred percent she knew because she said in her confessional, she was I knew right away. I was like, oh shit, I oh. felt bad. <laughs> but she's like a weird person. And I think a lot of people are like this, but they not a weird person because I actually really like her aside from this. But she is someone who like feels bad for other people. So she'll make decisions because she doesn't want to hurt people's feelings. And I'm like, girl, you can't live like that. I know, but it's weird. And, and the way Culver is so whipped that he took her Have back. Have you seen her? I know, but I don't care. Like the way you're, you would put yourself so low that you would just take her back after she just kissed another guy and you've known her for like 14 days. I'm very so confused. embarrassing. Yeah. I mean, obviously it's the hottest girl he's ever pulled. So he's super excited about that. And I don't know, maybe there, maybe she acted really into him and they just didn't show us that. But it was, of course, like a hot guy comes as a new deckhand. And what was weird to me is that Culver acted like never bothered. Like he never acted jealous. And it's like, Culver, have you seen this guy compared to you and like but his he's personality? So, but that's what I'm saying. He's so oblivious. He's like, my girl will never. It's like, you don't know her. Yeah, your girl of three days. Yeah. Yeah. She did though. <laughs> she literally goes 
and makes out with him when Culver is literally 10 feet away. And like when you guys are in the same car, like DMing him on Instagram, but okay. Oh yeah. She, and she didn't tell Culver any of that stuff. Oh man. That's so disrespectful. She was so wrong there. And so the next day she acted like she didn't know because she was embarrassed. And she literally said, I left with Culver because I felt bad for him. Are you joking? <laughs> Like he, cause he still wanted her. She's like, I kissed him and I didn't remember. And he was like, okay, well we can still try to make this work. And she literally said, you know, I left with him because I felt bad for him. And like we've said, they don't follow each other on social media. So, you know, they did, um, after on watch what happens live, I ended up watch, I ended up finding it and watching it, but it wasn't a full reunion. They just had Asia and captain Jason on. And what, what happened after was they went on like a one month, um, like coastal tour but then after that they something something crazy happened but Asia wouldn't say it she said something risky happened um she implied something inappropriate happened but didn't say so get a reunion like why aren't we like, I know they, the they best just one them. I know That's so crazy to me oh my Andy God, was asking weird. them all the same all the questions to them too and it was weird because it's like you want to hear the others talk about it not yeah Asia and J- Jason especially because Jason is very diplomatic like he's not gonna talk shit about yeah, his he's not gonna employees. Gossip. exactly yeah. he's not gonna say anything he has like a reputation to hold so um what'd you think about um Joao and Shafi and like how he kisses Margot? Oh, yeah, that was so uncomfortable and ick. I don't even know. know. But listen, Joao, he really was taking the chef seriously. And she kept, like, questioning him, like, you know, I don't know how I feel about you. I feel like you're fake. Like, bitch, like, I dare something. Like, are you kidding me? If we're on a date and someone calls me, you know, fake and whatever, like, and, and and as a guy, like, I'm starting to like you. I don't know. That's weird. Why are you calling me fake? It's just so... Like, it's so weird. She totally, like, ruined the mood. And you guys are, like, actually into each other. At this point, you guys have slept with each other. So why are you – why would you sleep with someone who's fake? I know. And I feel like at this point, all these yachties, they just have – because they only are seeing these people for maybe, like, tops one month, they just have no feelings or they think they will never see these people again. So they do the most, like, crazy, outrageous things ever to each other. Yeah. It's so weird. So, yeah, Joao obviously went wild because it was his last day. So then he asked Margo for a kiss. And – that was weird because the kiss was so scary yeah. and she instantly went to Shafi and apologized. Margot needs to maybe like watch her drink levels. I know we need to talk uh Chantal Southern charm though. You really need to get into it. Cause I want to talk about it. Cause I just want to talk about kissing and there's a scene where Olivia kisses this guy and it was so awkward. I literally had to cover my eyes. Like, oh, please gosh. don't ever show that it was their first kiss. And it's like, I don't think anyone's first kiss should be on camera, you know, in the real world. Cause it's so scary. And that one was really, really scary. But overall, you guys, watch Below Deck because it is so damn good. Yes, I agree. Is there anything else you wanted to say about Below Deck? Um, no, I'm just trying to see if there was anything interesting that they said about um, on the Watch What Happens Live. But everything kind of we knew. Yeah. Like I said, I mean, Jason was very diplomatic. So he even said he reached out to that guy that, like, left the show. He Adam? Adam? Just- yeah, no, not Adam. He he still said he still stands by firing Adam, the other guy, the one that um did I the sexual. His name. Yeah. Uh, why did he reach out to him? What did he say? He just said that he likes to reach out to everyone, so they're not down, and you know he likes to keep in contact with everyone. Oh, I regardless. kind of love that. Yeah, he's just he's such a good captain. He really is, but like he doesn't see his kid a lot, you know. Oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know how you feel Maybe about that? Dad. I'm just kidding. I know he's obviously a good dad because he like loves her, but like uh, at that age, you need your dad. The way my kids are, their dad. Like I'm sorry. One thing that was very interesting because they're coming to BravoCon, so I am so excited actually to see Captain Jason. Like I was getting so hot and bothered because they were talking all about all these like sexual things with him. But they, one of the questions they asked, Andy asked, was like, "Are you going to hook up with anybody at BravoCon?" And he got like so um like. Oh my gosh. Like yeah. embarrassed. And he kind of was like, yeah. So like I wonder like who is he talking to from Bravo? Oh, he said, yeah. Like he was just like like why not? Like, yeah, like it's gonna something's gonna go down. Right. Oh my gosh. Okay. I know. <laughs> wow. And Aisha's in Winter House. Oh, she is? Yeah, and so she said that she bonded with Kate, you know, from the other below deck. Um, oh okay yeah and she said that there's like something that katie does that's freaky around her but yeah that's the only thing that was interesting hmm. okay well and asia lives in colorado so i think that's where they went i don't know but yeah yeah oh you just 
Um, we just got some, I just got an email from All About TRH about someone saying they just wanted to let us know that they cited us and that was really nice of them. It was a big media outlet. So oh, nice. shout out to them. I have to email back, but I think that's all for today's episode. Thank you guys for listening. Bye guys. Bye.